Rivers people were stunned this afternoon when they got the information that the governor of Rivers State, Sir Similari Fubara, stormed the Rivers State House of Assembly quarters in yet another attempt to demolish the Rivers State House of Assembly quarters just the same way he demolished the Rivers State House of Assembly complex. Nigerians, Rivers people, are watching events day by day as our own governor, who is supposed to uphold the constitution, is gradually sliding into the position of the chief lawbreaker of Nigeria. Our governor demolished the House of Assembly complex and plans are underway from what we are seeing to again demolish the River State House of Assembly quarters. The quarters we have here is one of the best in the country. The River State House of Assembly quarters was built by the past administration under His Excellency Ezin Wanye Songwiki and was commissioned in August uh, in the year 2022 by the then Speaker of the House of Representatives and now Chief of Staff to Mr. President of the Federal Republic. As you can see, there's nothing wrong with any of the buildings. All the buildings are in perfect condition. Our hall is in perfect condition. We have no issues. We have not called on the governor for any form of help. The River State House of Assembly quarters was built for members of the River State House of Assembly and not for the executive arm of government. The undue interferences by the governor is one that is unbecoming of a sitting governor who is supposed to uphold the sanctity of the law. We are disappointed, we are ashamed to have a governor who has no respect for our constitution, who has no respect for our laws, who has no respect for democracy. Indeed, our governor is an assault to democracy. Day by day, the governor executes actions that are against democratic institutions. If it is not against the River House of Assembly, it is against chairman of local government. In fact, the governor has declared war on all elected people in River State, so that only him will function as the elected one, while others will be on the run. We don't know why the governor has resorted to this type of self-help. The governor has shown that he's a violent man. Our governor is a violent man, and I say it repeatedly, and I have evidence to say so. Members of the River of Assembly were stunned when the governor mobilized thugs to attack Mr. Speaker in his residence. My wife, my children were in my official residence when the governor mobilized thugs from government house. They chanted from government house to my official residence to harm me and my family, but for the intervention of security agencies. The governor repeatedly does this to me and members of the House of Assembly. Today he came in person with his thugs. Many of them jumped our fence, they broke the gates, and enter there uninvited. Ordinarily, the governor needs to write the speaker to get into our hollow chamber or to get into our premises, or at least inform us if he has any reason to come here. Coming here and seeking to demolish our property, one built by, with taxpayers' money for the effective administration of the state legislature, is unbecoming of a governor in our time. A time when other governors are paying attention on how to improve the well-being of their people. Our own governor is busy looking for how to maintain structure, destroying democratic institutions, destroying facilities built by other hardworking governors. He has nothing to show but to demolish. The House of Assembly complex is demolished that day. He has done nothing. He has not done anything to rebuild it. Our property that he, he, he took, even some of the things belonging to members, the governor and his thugs, took away our personal belongings. To this day, we can't find them. Shamelessly, the governor will get into the House of Assembly complex, take our property, demolish the building, and is happy with himself, and moves around with the toga of Mr. Innocent, whereas he's the violent man, the man who does not respect the law. But for the avoidance of doubt, it's important I make it clear that the 27 members of the Rivers House of Assembly are sitting conducting legislative business in line with the Constitution of the Federal Republic as altered, in line with our laws. We remain members. No member of the River State House of Assembly has his or her seat declared vacant. The Constitution is clear that the only person that can declare a seat vacant is Mr. Speaker. I am the Speaker. I was elected by all the members sitting and present during the, uh, the day the House was proclaimed. 
All the members voted me. I've continued to do my job and I remain the speaker. The deputy speaker is the deputy speaker. All of us were doing the job for which we have been elected to perform. It is shameful that the governor is resorting to desperate measures in order to garner support and to allow his appointee to take over our duty. But let me also make it clear and draw the attention of rivers people and indeed Nigerians that there is a subsisting judge, a, a subsisting judgment of the Federal High Court, which has issued an interim injunction on the governor. The governor is a party in that suit, asking the governor to stop interfering in our affairs. That, is, that judgment of court is still subsisting. The governor has, has appealed against it, and that judgment has not been set aside. That judgment has said it clearly that I am the speaker. Of course, I was elected by the people, and members are sitting and should not be disturbed. But every day we, we listen and read to media reports of some people, people who were suspended on the 30th of October, purporting to be principal officers of the house. They were duly suspended by the rules of the house. They are already in court. The court has not given any judgment to the contrary. The judgment is subsisting. The constitution is clear as to how a member can leave his seat or vacate his seat. Our seats are intact. Yesterday we sat and by the grace of God, the River State Electricity Market Bill scaled through second reading. Of course, yesterday we were able to pass the River State Local Government Law 2024, which is uh, a bill that uh, a member sponsored in order to consolidate all the laws of uh, guiding the operations of local government in the states. By the special grace of God, we expect that the governor will give his assent. If he fails to do, give his assent, of course, the House will uh, go with what the Constitution has asked us to do. But what is important is that 27 members of the House are intact. We are working together for the people of River State. We are doing our job. We remain members, we remain principal officers. Governor has no jurisdiction to say who is a speaker or who is not a speaker. Governor does not have any iota of claim or any provision in the constitution or any law that gives him power to say whether the assembly is existing or not. The House of Assembly is a creation of law, is a creation of the constitution. And we're happy with what we're doing for River States. What we are seeing is corruption that is fighting back. Mm. Corruption is fighting back. Everything we have challenged the governor to answer, he has refused to answer them. All he is doing is to resort to blackmail, intimidation, media attacks. He has employed his media attack dogs. They are moving from one media house to the other, peddling falsehood against Rivers people, against lawmakers. We remain resolute. Yes, sir. Rivers job has been given to us, which is to make laws for the good governance of our people in line with Section 4 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. The local governments in Nigeria are properly provided for in Section 7 of the 1999 Constitution, which says that the local government shall be by democratically elected uh, individuals, and we stand by that. We will resist any attempt to allow people who were not elected to be in office. The reason is because the Constitution is clear and the constitution abhors unelected people to be in office where elected people are supposed to occupy. So we are happy. We know that plans are on their way to harm us, but we know that we cannot run away from a job that we have been elected to perform. We remain resolute. I want to once again commend honorable members. Look at our women. Most of them are doing, they have left their families and serving our dear states. They are not afraid. They should tell the governor that members are not afraid. He can come with all the military personnel. He can come with all the police officers. We will sit when we need to sit. Anytime we have joined the house, when it is time to sit, we will sit. Because we have the mandate of the people to sit. Governor has no power over the legislature. The legislature is a creation of the constitution. And he will be ashamed because he has nothing that he can do to stop us. All those finding the embers of war in River States will be put to shame. River States House of Assembly members will remain resolute in line with peace. We want peace in the state, and that's why we're making good laws for the good governance of our dear states. The governor is the aggressor, he's the one who is the, who is the violent one, he's the one who is demolishing property belonging to assembly taxpayers' money, he's the one who is attacking us, sending talks against us, he's the one carrying police shamelessly 
shamelessly moving from place to place looking for what to demolish. Other governors are commissioning and making life better for their people. Mm -hmm. While he's moving around looking for what to demolish. He should be, he should be ashamed of himself. Mm -hmm. So we stand resolute and I want to say that reverse work that has been given to us, which is to make good laws, we will continue to do it. We call on Mr. President of the Federal Republic. We call on the international community, the British High Commission, the US Embassy, all known democracies in the world to intervene and call this insane tyrant to order. He does not love democracy. He is a product of democracy, but he hates democracy. Democracies all over the world should call him to order. They should call him to order because our nascent democracy is at stake with the likes of Governor Simla Fubara. He calls us young people, but most of the members here are in us by age. But it's not about age because he's the one making reference to age. What we are here to do is to make laws. Governor should allow us to do our job while he does his own job. We have said it repeatedly. Funds of river states are in the hands of a governor that is spending them without due process. As we speak, we don't have the Bureau of uh, Public Procurement in place. As we speak, there is no DG. As we speak, there is no board. And the Constitution, the, 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 the River State uh, uh, Bureau of Public Procurement Law says that the governor is supposed to submit names of chairman and members of this Bureau to assembly for confirmation. These are the people who are supposed to go through due process to see whether a word of contracts are in order. Because we are beginning to reveal to the world what the governor is doing. That is why he's after us. Let the world know that the reason the governor is after us is because we are beginning to reveal his actions. Taxpayers money is not safe in the hands of the governor with what we have, the preliminary investigations we have. And that's why we are calling the governor to account. And that's why he is fighting back. Indeed, corruption is fighting back. Thank you, everybody. Some of his dogs killed the fence and enter into the House of Assembly quarters. Something that is so shameful coming from a governor. We have never seen this kind of thing before. This is what we call proper executive rascality. And it's shameful that when we're supposed to be reaping from the benefits of dividends of democracy, we have a governor who is not prepared to deliver the dividends of democracy to our people, but is only prepared to attack democratic institutions. What a shame.